Right, so, um, hi everyone, this is the second part of this video uh, of the first week a personality psychology course. So, uh, on the last video, we're, uh, we're having the discussion about, we were having the discussion about uh, personality in ourselves and I gave you several questions to ponder um, and this is the uh, several uh, conclusions that we reach yeah uh, at the last uh, uh, at the last topics yeah at the previous topics uh, we, um, you can understand your personality better through others feedback which means that you don't always yeah you don't always need personality uh, tests to understand about yourself to get better know about yourself uh, but you could ask other people's feedback, but uh, the, uh, the one cautions <laughs> behind this uh, after this argument is that uh, what others think about you, how others perceive you may not be always right, might not be always accurate, but it is helpful. Yeah, it is helpful to, uh, to gather such information in order to, uh, to, 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 to know better about yourselves. And um, other conclusion that we might uh, that I find quite interesting is that uh, the way we present ourselves uh, publicly does not necessarily align to our real personality which means that uh, our real ourselves that the real self yeah would be completely hidden to the to the eyes of the public <laughs> yeah whether we uh, intendedly uh, hide it from the public or it is naturally uh, it's naturally invisible from the public eyes but uh, in this case, we agree, we, we would uh, assume that uh, how would someone address themselves yeah, in public, how they behave themselves, how we, they present themselves uh, would be quite different from, would be completely different from uh, what, uh, what he describes uh, as the real self, as the real themselves. It does not always necessarily align to the real self. And also, if that is the case, <laughs> the next questions would be, would you say, uh, w w what is the personality? Which one is the personality, the real self or our public self? Yeah. So which one is our personality? If there's conflicting uh, characteristic, uh, conflicting characteristic between our public and also our private self. And the next question would be, which one is the personality, the real personality? It is the one that we present uh, publicly or the one that we hide from the public eyes. <laughs> so we're going to discuss this uh, more deeply in Google Classroom. And uh, this question leads to the next uh, to the next topic, which I find quite interesting. Uh, are you the same person online? So um, we, uh, I, I believe that you would agree that uh, that that internet has play uh, the, it plays uh, a very important part uh, in our life, and we use uh, social media in in many forms. Uh, I believe that one of you has at least <laughs> every one of you has at uh, has at least one uh, social media account, whether it is Twitter or TikTok. I don't know, uh, <laughs> but the question would be: Are you the same person? Uh, on Twitter and on the in the real life yeah so uh, and how is the mechanism how we should uh, how we could understand uh, how we behave on social media uh, how we present our real self in, in in social media and does the use of social media would influence or change our personality yeah so this is something that uh, that has been a debate over a decade yeah <laughs> whether it changed how we respond how we how uh, whether social media could influence our real uh, life behavior and also other questions that uh, that I find fascinating yeah as a social psychology researcher uh, do people with different personalities use social media in different ways for example if you uh, compare one uh, one individual who is completely intro introverted and the one who is uh, more extroverted uh, uh, do they use yeah do they use a uh, social media differently according to different personality that they have now this is also a very interesting questions yeah and uh, of course uh, social networking sites might co convey accurate images yeah in some studies yeah 
so you can you can click on the link here to read uh, more about uh, about the study but the study confirms that we are the same person online yeah uh, in the real life and also the online li uh, in our online presence uh, but a study found that many people have tendency to present themselves online as being much more emotionally stable than they really are which means that if you see sane person on social media sane celebrities in their instagram account they might appear themselves as being more sane than they actually than they actually are <laughs> yeah so uh, social media can be um, manipulative in in a way that it would not always give you accurate description of one's personality because they are more stable more rich more um better yep yeah. well generally they they could uh, someone could um uh could present themselves as having better life than they actually are <laughs> yeah so you don't so please don't be uh don't be fooled yeah by how uh, how someone uh present themselves uh on social media and those who are introverted so this is the the, the answer of uh, previous question so whether uh, people with different personality would use uh, social media differently and the question and the, the answer is yes yeah yes because people who are introverted neurotic lonely and socially awkward they might be benefit yeah they might benefit from their interaction with other people online because some, this is something that they would be find it and they would find difficult to do in the real life yeah so it might be helpful and also they find it easier here yeah, to express their real personality so it means that it would be quite helpful for this kind of person um, to express themselves yeah uh, when it compared to the real life yeah so it would reduce the anxiety it would reduce the awkwardness <laughs> uh, when they uh, when they use uh, social media compared to how they behave uh, in the real life and then the questions would be what about Pretty, sil uh, pretty selfies that you find in Instagram or uh, or interesting videos that you find in uh, that you find in TikTok. Uh, does that an accurate description of of this person life? Yeah. And uh, and the next questions would be okay. So this this course would look like uh, you, you that you get more questions than than the than the answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so because I I believe that. Um, uh, personality psychologists they find uh, they are currently doing a very thorough uh, research program in order to explore this question so some of uh, the answer of some of these questions would be provided yeah there are some uh, answer from from these questions but there are some questions that we are not fully known about the answers yeah so the research in personality psychology are extremely dynamic yeah and it differs and it diverge from um from many perspectives and many paradigms so i i believe if you are interested in this field there is uh, there are many research program and also there are many uh courses that you could uh easily chip in yeah uh if you are interested more about this yeah so these are questions that uh that are commonly addressed about how we behave in social media so the first question would be does social media influence your well-being which means that whether someone who are very active in social media uh, could imply or could affect their well-being yeah so that's the first questions and the second would be does it make you feel lonely and depressed so the more you use social media uh, means that the more depressed you are <laughs> and the more lonely you are and the third one would be does it uh, destroy your life satisfaction and your quality of life uh, and basically it damage you inside out yeah it destroys you as a person and most importantly can someone actually suffer from social media addiction so this is the questions that commonly raised yeah about how we um how we behave online and the uh the answers are no <laughs> yeah uh it completely dif uh, it completely different from our expectation or uh, or our common sense uh, the evidence says no it does not affect your well-being yeah so the use of social media does not mean it would reduce your well-being yeah it actually has a very little impact to your well-being yeah and if you're interested to read more about this research i suggest you just click on the link and also social media too 
uh, has a very small effect to, uh, to life satisfaction. And previous research, um, they, they, yeah, they actually said that it has a huge impact on, on life uh, satisfaction in our uh, well-being. And some researcher would would say is that um, in in our research it says completely different. Yeah, so it uh, the use of social media is positively correlated with the prevalence of depression. It makes people depressed. It makes people uh, are disinterested with the real life uh, real life relationship. And it happens that those research are not ex- are not extremely reliable. Uh, because the the rampant use, uh, the rampant or the popularity of uh, of questionable research practices, and it happens that the previous research that says there a connection between uh, social media and well being, uh, it is proven that the uh, that the researcher use questionable research practice, which means that their findings are not reliable, and some of the motives are. Um, are actually financial motives. So these researchers, they own a consultation firm that aims to uh, cure, yeah, that aims to cure social media addiction. So there is a conflict of interest yeah, in those research. Not only the use of QRP or the questionable research practices, but there is also a conflict of interest between these researchers with <laughs> with their own firm, yeah, their own interest in, in establishing a firm that aims to cure social media addiction so i i find uh, this research they say is otherwise uh, are more reliable than uh, those who says that uh, social media makes you sick <laughs> yeah and gaming disorder it's a myth yeah so there's no such thing that we call gaming disorder yeah and we need to be very careful when we uh when we try to diagnose <laughs> yeah if one's having uh certain yeah certain mental disorder because it has to be driven by the data not only by our subjective interpretation and research say no there's no data there's no evidence to back up the arguments or the existence of gaming disorder and no of course not our our generation is not doomed by social media not by digital technology but more likely with a climate crisis yeah, or pandemic so we're actually doomed uh, uh, by uh, by other crises but certainly not digital technology so you you should not uh, be you should not be worried about <laughs> about uh, having or, or giving your time uh, to social media the only thing that you need to uh, carefully uh, aware you need to be uh, carefully aware is that you need to have more self control and self management <laughs> yeah uh, 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 when you when you're doing uh, when you're using social media but no it does not have any impact to your own uh, well being uh, as of course as well as your personality so it does not change how you are yeah so of course <laughs> anytime uh, someone Anytime someone uh, uh, brought up this argument saying that social media would destroy the whole society, it destroys our generation, I believe that it's completely untrue. Yeah. Uh, of course, when it comes to the well-being uh, discourse, yeah. But it might fucked up our <laughs> our life in a way that it would uh, provide uh, the medium for disinformation and misinformation. Yeah. It, it is completely proven social media it's completely proven to destroy our de- our democracy by providing the medium for this information and misinformation campaign to spread uh, but other than that i believe it, it does not have a, a real impact to our life so um one uh, psychological theory that i find it interesting that explains how people behave online is online disinhibition effect which means that uh, describes the mechanism uh, when the restriction of face-to-face interaction is lifted, yeah, and when you, when we're doing, um, uh, when we're doing an interaction online, which means the lots of restriction from face-to-face interaction are lifted, and when you communicating online, you might be surprised that a lots of unprecedented actions uh, on social media. You might find your friends who are. Uh, who are not very not very uh, chatty in their real life, but they they could 
uh, appear very chatty when they use social media which means that uh, these behavior are unprecedented in the real life which means that yeah we allow some uh, some differences between our real life and also for our online life online life and online disinhibition effect or this unprecedented action could be toxic yeah someone could be a good person a samaritan a good samaritan in their real life but when they are when they go to social media when they pres pres they are present in social media they become very toxic and a troll in fact it could happen yeah it could happen and also there are some people who are not uh who are afraid yeah who are afraid to to uh to express yeah to express uh their good intention or good faith they would use otherwise yeah in social media on social media um people would be more generous for example on social media they would be willing to help one another something that they might not do in the real life so it could be toxic but otherwise it could also be nine yeah and so i think that's the last uh discussion the last topic that i'm going to address yeah in this video so if you think this is helpful or if you have any questions please do raise it on google classroom and if you need to contact me personally, you can just click on this link and drop me an email. I would be prefer to be contacted on email. And I'm also act quite active on, on Twitter. So if you, if you want to reach me out on Twitter, I'm also available there. But I strongly suggest you to drop me an email or just uh, drop your questions on Google Classroom. So thank you so much for watching. And I hope this video uh, helpful to your uh, to your understanding about personality theories and i again i need to remind you to check on the course syllabus and also the course contract to uh to many information about this course and please do raise uh, questions if you need to be so thank you so much and have a good day